Hey there YouTubers, hey, um, Johnny45 ECP here. Um, so today what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to um, uh, process a live chicken. So basically we're going to go ahead and slaughter it and then I'm going to show you how we're going to go ahead and um, you know pluck the feathers, uh, clean it out and get it ready for um, and get it ready for the table. So just a heads up you know uh, for those of you who are uh, um, that's not your cup of tea um, I would definitely recommend that um, you either fast forward and get past it. I'm not going to show you any gory stuff um, as far as, you know, the actual severing of the head and stuff. Um, but, you know, we will be, you know, extracting the, uh, the innards and all that. So if that's too much, just want to give you guys a heads up. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and get prepared. And then um, we'll just kind of uh, go through it and I'll uh, explain it as we go. All right. See you guys in a bit. So um, here's the um, basically the preparations uh, beforehand. So um, right here, um, this is just a clean plastic cutting board. Um, you know, even if a uh, fairly you know sharp knife, uh, that's really important. Uh, this is where I'll be uh, when I pluck it, and I'll be putting the feathers away. Um, right now, I got some water boiling. Uh, you definitely want to scald the uh, the chicken, uh, to, which makes it a lot easier to. Uh, to pull the feathers out and um, and this is the chopping block so basically what I do um, you know to keep it from um, you know make it as quick again and as humane as possible um, you will put this around you know the chicken's neck and then you will I'll just tie it off here um, which keeps them from kind of curling their heads up and maybe you know could there could be a chance of missing the neck um, so this way it's clean it's fast um, you know the chickens um, the chickens will naturally continue to um, uh, move um, after you know just muscle contractions much like snakes do and some other animals um, you know that tends to freak some people out and some people actually inhumanely think it's funny let them run around and just bleed everywhere that's just really unnecessary and um, and just inhumane so um, I do hold on to it until it's done and then um, from there then we proceed so um, I'll be right back All right, so this is actually a rooster. Um, so we get uh, every um, every time we hatch chicks, uh, we usually end up with well, basically 50% turned out to be um, turned out to be rooster. So um, this is the guy today that we're going to go ahead and um, and process. Um, so as I was describing to you before, what we're going to do is um, we're going to go ahead and put this just uh, right around its neck, and it's not you know not to strangle them again, just to keep them from curling that head up. Um, so, you know, you can do a nice clean, clean cut and, um, and, you know, again, the, the animal doesn't suffer. All right. So I'll go ahead and do that and I'll come back. All right. So, um, here we are. I'm going to go ahead and dunk it into hot water, boiling water, and, um, I'll go ahead and, and we'll go ahead and start, uh, plucking it. Does help if you have uh, if you wear gloves or other athletic gloves. I always tend to forget. But um, again, once you scald it, the feathers do come out up in bunches like that fairly quickly, and then um, it does definitely help to do the job. Um, you don't have to scald it. The problem is if you don't scald it, some of these feathers are pretty um, pretty well into the skin. I mean, their roots are pretty pretty deep, and then you do end up tearing the uh, the skin. Um, and if you don't eat chicken skin, I guess it doesn't really matter. But if that's the case, then you might as well go ahead and skin it instead of plucking it to begin with, and you save yourself a loss, uh, a lot of um, just kind of a you know it is a bit of a messy job. So as you can see now, there's um, if you guys want to automate and start um, having your own chicken processing plants. There's a lot of uh, really interesting and good videos out there of um, automatic uh, people that have made chicken pluckers, and um, most of them the base is um, the basic concept. It's a rotating drum, so usually out of a washing machine, and um, they'll line the inside with um, 
with uh, rubber uh, rubber tips or rubber fingers and um, the rubber scrubbing constantly scrubbing up against the um, the chicken will eventually actually just pluck it clean so it's ingenious you guys should definitely look for a automatic chicken plucker or um, or DIY chicken plucker and um, pretty clever stuff pretty clever stuff um, I don't do enough to um, you know merit um, having um, something like that just sitting around for you know once in a very long months so again most of our chickens are for eggs and uh, only when we have uh, we do keep one rooster so we, uh, we can have uh, fertile eggs to make uh, you know obviously more chickens but uh, we don't need more than one rooster and then if you have more than one they start to compete and crow all night so um, this is actually one of the uh, new from our latest hatching and uh, I caught it crowing the other morning and so unfortunately um, we don't need we don't need any more roosters so today today we're gonna we're gonna eat well we're gonna have um, fresh chicken so again the younger they are obviously the more tender that they are um, this one's about four months old um, so it's a good um, all right so pretty much done here uh, what I'll do is um, you can the easiest way here is to just scrub it just rub it with your hands and all those will, will come out um, you can some people will um, grab a torch and they'll go around to burn all the little hairs off and all that um, you can do that that works quite well actually um, just be aware don't don't leave the um, the torch for too long in one spot uh, keep it constantly moving because um, you will start to cook the skin and it will shrink and it's just sort of a little odd there's nothing wrong with it all right but um, you sort of pre cooking your chicken all right so we're almost done I'm gonna go ahead and do the legs now because I've missed the legs in the beginning and again I just don't want to be pulling it and, and ripping the skin and ripping the skin off so there we go Same thing with the hot, with the uh, scalding water. You don't want to dunk it and leave it in there because you will basically start to boil. You know, you'll have boiled, start to boil a chicken. So you just want to go ahead and um, just dunk it in real quick, pull it right out, and you see how easy that uh, that all just falls out. All right. And, um, you know, the job is what it is. Um, you know, again, just treat the animals humanely. Um, you know, I mean, this, this is an, an animal that's losing its life for you to be able to eat. Um, and you can say, well, you don't need to do this because, uh, you know, you can go to the store and buy a chicken. Well, where do you think those chickens come from? Um, at least my chickens um, are raised um, in a stress-free environment, meaning that they can, they're not caged. Um, they get to run around. Um, they're fed outdoors. They run around outdoors. They get to do what normal in the wild chickens would do. Um, they're not caged, and um, and so I feel much better eating my chicken than I do promoting a business that is um, basically uh, mistreating mistreating animals and. Uh, you know, I could extend. I would love to extend that to the rest of my uh, my menu, uh, meaning uh, meat. And uh, you know, same thing goes for cows and pigs and the way we raise them, and, um, and largely manufactured or industrial uh, type of environments. But um, you know, we all do what uh, what we can. All right, so we're pretty much done. I'm going to go ahead and rinse this off, rinse off my cutting area, and then we'll start uh, cleaning it out. So the first thing 
first thing we're going to do is um, so a little chicken anatomy. So there's the butthole there, and obviously the uh, all the intestines and the uh, um, kind of lead through and get to that area. So what you want to do basically is cut around that, so you can remove the whole the whole um, insides in one tube in one piece. Because if you cut it, then you're going to get um, uh, basically feces in your in the meat, and um, that's going to you know taint your meat and, and, uh, and basically make it you know really well, damaged. Or, uh, so, um, if you like chicken butt, that's your call. I'm not a huge chicken butt fan, so I'm going to go ahead and start right around the top. And so once you start cutting in, you will see that um, it basically the insides of the chicken, um, just like any other animal, is really just a cavity that holds that holds all the uh, all the in guts and entrails. So if you cut, so again here's the butthole right here. So you want to basically cut around it. Um, you don't want to go in with a knife because you don't know what you're going to be hitting. So you definitely want to be careful. So this is right here. My fingers. That's the lining that holds everything inside. All right. So we'll cut around here. Cut around there. got that um, you can break the lining you can it's fairly it's very strong but at the same time fragile enough so there you go so everything is closed up and um, and you're good to go on that all right uh, next thing we want to do is go ahead and and slit it up the middle so we can start to remove the rest of the uh, the rest of the uh, insides okay, and I'll go through and show you what each is and then you know depending on uh, your taste and how you were raised, you may think some of this stuff is good to eat and some of it you may not think it's good to eat. Alright, so again, you're going to be, we're going to be uh, rotisserieing this chicken today, so I'm going to try to leave it as whole as a bust. Then normally I would actually slit it down the middle and um, because it makes it easier to actually remove everything. Alright, once we've got here the, um, the esophagus that comes down as, the, as well as the, um, the, air, the airway, they're still attached to the top here. So we want to go ahead and separate that out. Um, another thing you want to watch out for, or not watch out for, just be aware of it. Um, the craw, um, this is a chicken craw. It's basically a little sack that sits right in their chest area, and that's where they keep all their food. So if you haven't fed them in the last few hours, um, that will be empty. Um, but if it's full, again, it's no big deal. I mean, all they really eat is grains and bugs and stuff like that, so there's nothing wrong with it. But um, but you just want to be aware that uh, if you do puncture that, you're just going to have to have clean up whatever food they ate last. This is your um, this is your airway, and you'll find this one. So you've got two tubes here. This is the airway, and this is the uh, the food. Now, how do I know that? Because this one goes to the craw, and this will go straight down to the lungs. So what you want to basically do is get in there and just separate this lining from around both of those tubes. Um, that way you can pull all the uh, guts right out the bottom and everything, all the entrails out the bottom all together. It just makes, makes it for a little bit cleaner. Alright. Again, this stuff I tend to do manually just because I'm trying to avoid sticking knives in there and puncturing anything that is just going to make it for, for harder cleanup. Alright, so as long as you get in there, clear the lining around it, it'll be alright. Okay. Now you got the bottom and you're just going to literally reach in and scoop out, okay? Make sure you're not grabbing onto an intestine, it's just the lining. If it's the outside lining, you can go ahead and, and just rip right through it. Okay, there we go. so there you go. That's all the stuff coming out the top. Now we'll go through this stuff and what it is. and. All right. The lungs, I was going to try to show you that, but that may be hard because they're very fragile. Oh, here we go. There they are. All right. And it's pretty much... 
explain what it looks like. All right, um, this is a really, really young rooster. Um, so something else that people like to eat. Um, this is known as a chicken fry or a chicken testicle. Uh, now on a, on a mature rooster, this will be about, about that big, right about the size of my finger, about right there. So um, uh, a lot of people like to fry those and eat them. Um, honest, personally, I never tried it, um, but hey, I'm game. I'll, I'll try anything once. And if it's absolutely disgusting and horrible, then I won't eat it. So and here's the other one. So again, on a, on a full-grown rooster, it would actually probably be almost, a, uh, so here's the heart. It would be almost the size of the heart or a little bit bigger than that. So the heart we're going to keep because we like that. Um, the liver as well. Um, liver is good to eat. Um, you do need to look for uh, the bile, and there it is. So if you see this big green thing, in some it's bigger, and it's in, in others it's smaller. So you do not want to rupture that extremely bitter. It will completely ruin everything that's, that's in here. Um, and this is the gizzard. So what the gizzard is, for those of you who don't know, the gizzard is chickens don't have teeth. Uh, I know there's jokes going around about chicken teeth, but chickens do not have teeth. And so what they do is they will swallow rocks, gravel, and um, all their food gets ground up in the gizzard. So let me pop this open right now. And um, I'll cut this open so you guys can see what, the, what a gizzard looks like on the inside. I try not to use my best knife. To cut through it because usually it does have rocks in it and the last thing I want to do is uh, is basically ruin all right so you can see there's all kinds of uh, there's rocks there's uh, corn there's grain and so all those little rocks grind up all the food and that's how uh, they basically chew all right so the rocks and stuff you dump out also when you're processing this you will go ahead and take this hard leathery inside and you will Kind of split that off so i'll show you here real quick a nice sparing knife or this is actually a, a fillet fish fillet knife but i really like it because it really gets i'm able to sharpen it really really sharp all right so basically that's all edible especially when you put it in the soup we'll wash that up a little bit so anyway i'll take the rest of the inside and uh, let my wife clean it all out she's the cook and, uh, and I am the processor out here, so. All right, that water's too hot. I'm gonna leave this right here. All right, again, um, here's the rest of the liver. So what we're gonna do is get rid of any extra super fatty stuff. And um, the liver, again, just be real careful. Separate out the liver. And any body. questions about how close or far you are, just, just stay way away. Here, look, I'm gonna leave that piece behind. I just don't wanna mess with that. But everything else is pretty much guts. Um, here's the lungs. Um, I wasn't raised with eating those, so I don't really know, I wouldn't even know how to prepare them. So I'm not quite sure. So again, that's going in the, John's not eating that stuff uh, bucket. All right, so I'll put this, actually what I will end up doing with these is um, digging a hole and burying them. And so they'll either end up being fertilizer or either a coyote or a dog will come along and then it will, um, We'll eat that, so it's it's good to go either way. All right, next thing we're going to do. Um, wife is not a fan. The wife is not a fan of the of the, of the feet, chicken feet. So we will go ahead and score right around the knee area. Do a sideways snap. And then you can either tear or I think it's just a little cleaner. There's tendons left over. Just go ahead and slip the, uh, the tendons. I will save these because I like boiling them. Um, so we do have an older rooster that we're going to be processing today as well. Um, and we're going to be using him. He's kind of, since he's kind of old, he's going to be a bit tough. And so we're going to make a chicken broth out of him. And in my chicken broth, I do like, I do like chicken feet in my broth. So we're going to go ahead and go with that. Okay, so we'll go ahead and snap. And then we'll take that off. All right, so here you are. Uh, not quite as fat and plump as the ones you see in the stores, but then it's also not full of hormones and steroids and all kinds of other stuff that uh, you'll find the ones in the store. So um, 
we'll go ahead and uh, get this guy uh, cleaned up. I'll give it to my wife. She's going to marinate it, and then we're going to go ahead and barbecue or uh, rotisserie this today. All right. I hope that this was useful. And um, if you have any questions or comments, again, uh, don't please don't comment about how uh, um, you know gross or whatever it is. I mean, that's that's you know this is just how it's done. And this is you know the best, most humane way to do it. Um, but if you have questions uh, on on anything that I may have either passed over or forgotten, um, please put comments below and uh, I will answer them as uh, soon as I possibly can. All right, guys, see you in a bit. All right, so here's a comparison between um, yeah, this would be a fairly adult rooster. Um, and so this one is about a year old. Um, they may get a little bit bigger. And this would be the one from, this would be the one from the four-month-old or about three to four-month-old uh, rooster there. So you can see the comparison. Yeah, they look the same or fairly similar. Um, we're going to go ahead and fry these bad boys up and see um, and see what they're like. All right. So um, so so here's the chicken, all processed and cleaned out. This chicken is good to go. And have yourself a brew.